Hello and welcome to the don'ts of Myrtle Beach. We've done this before, but that was several years ago and a lot has changed in the past few years. Let's go over what you should not be doing and should not be forgetting about when you visit Myrtle Beach. First thing we're gonna talk about in no particular order is don't forget to pack your patience. This area, service industry driven, a lot of short staffed establishments. So that means you're looking at a longer wait time to get into a restaurant. You're looking at a lengthier service while you're in said restaurant. That's just one example. The short staffing issue is nationwide, but, but here in Myrtle, the short staffing issue is exponentially worse. So please just be patient. The second thing I'm gonna recommend that you don't do while you're in Myrtle Beach don't just willy-nilly plan a trip and show up or on the fly show up. This is why you need to do your research. There are a lot of festivals, conventions, bike weeks, car truck weeks, etc. that take place throughout the year and they bring in a lot of people and a lot of vehicles. Now these crowds could make your trip uh, not so spectacular time, especially if you're trying to get from one side of town to the other. And there are a plethora of motorcycles in the way or sports cars, what have you. Don't forget about the country music festival, which congests the downtown boardwalk proper for the entirety of the festival. Do your research, find out when these festivals are and conventions are taking place and kind of work around them. Here's just an offhand example that I'll give you. Early January, you would think, you know, Myrtle Beach, kind of slow, not much going on. You might sit down to a restaurant, as I did recently, and have a very long wait because the convention center was having a volleyball tournament and there were a lot of people filling up that restaurant. Unexpected consequence. Don't forget that the laws are ever changing, especially in a community like this that has a tourist driven economy and transient population. In 2021, there were a few new laws enacted in the city of Myrtle Beach. Some of them are weird, some of them make sense. Let's go over them. First one, you are not allowed to dig a hole in the beach greater than two feet deep. This is against the law. It's also against the law to use a metal shovel when you're on the beach. And to bring that hole in the shovel full circle, when you are done at the beach, you must fill any hole that you have dug. If you do not, you may get a ticket or whatnot. These are laws on the books. Are they enforceable? Maybe, maybe not, but they're still laws. And honestly, it's common courtesy to fill those deep holes when you're done. You got kids running around the beach. You don't want anyone to mess up their ankle or, you know, God forbid worse. Another relatively new law in the city of Myrtle Beach has to do with surf fishing. If you want to conduct some surf fishing, you need a license in the city limits. And this is a separate license from a pier fishing license. Now, to go on top of that, swimmers and pedestrians now have priority and the right of way on the beach and the surf. This means if you are a surf fisherman and a pedestrian decides they want to show up to the beach and start swimming, you got to get out of the way. The swimmer has the right of way. Don't wait in long lines to get a table at a restaurant. You don't have to do that because if you've got an efficiency room rented or you've got an Airbnb, you know, a kitchen with a stove, you could get food delivered to your room and or house. And I'm not just talking meals from restaurants. Get full on groceries delivered. Show right up at your front door and then you can make your own meal. Save a lot of money, especially if you got a big family in tow and you got a lot of people. That's going to save you an arm and a leg and you don't have to wait for an hour for a table. Next thing I'm gonna recommend you don't do in Myrtle Beach, and I've mentioned this before, and I will keep mentioning it. Don't swim in the stormwater outfalls. These are notorious for being contaminated. What am I talking about? All the rain that drips off of roofs, cars, the streets, Heck, the water that runs across the dog park, which you know is not exactly the cleanest ground in town, flows to the ocean eventually. And it goes through these outfalls into the ocean. You, know, you could notice them by pipes or uh, ditches or little streams that run across the beach into the ocean. Kids like to play in them, splashing them. They're like little tidal ponds. Please don't do that. The worst one in town, I would say, is Third Avenue, uh, Withers Swash. But there's several. Just pull up Google Earth, go to Myrtle Beach, and just kind of pan down the beach. You're going to see them at 24th Avenue North, uh, 21st North, 3rd Avenue, as I mentioned, and 11th South, I believe. They're very obvious from the sky. Just try to not to uh, hang out around those and you should be okay. My next don't of Myrtle Beach is pretty obvious, but a lot of people forget to do this. Don't, do not forget to wake up early. And I don't mean every day of your trip. At least once, wake up early and see that sunrise. This is the East Coast. It's not every day you get to see the sun crest over the ocean during a sunrise. It's a beautiful thing. 
at least wake up early one day and check that out. The next one is, uh, is a big one in my book. Do not, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to travel outside of Myrtle Beach, whether you go north or south. There's a lot of towns out there with a lot to offer. All these towns I'm about to mention real quick and run down are within a 30 minute drive on a good traffic day from Myrtle going north or south. And they have a plethora of options to keep you entertained, especially if you're a naturalist. For example, go down to Merle's Inlet. You got Brook Green Garden, Huntington State Park, the Marsh Walk, which is full of great restaurants and views. Merle's Inlet also has tidal inlets that have marinas that go right out to the ocean. You could charter a boat, etc. Garden City Beach, they have an awesome pier and some really nice secluded beaches on their south end that are pretty quiet. Surfside Beach is gonna have a brand new pier in the near future. They've got a bunch of restaurants. Surfside Beach is also a relatively residential beach town. So if you wanna rent a house down at the beach, keep Surfside in mind. It's, it's a nice little quiet beach town. North Myrtle Beach is also much quieter than Myrtle. They've got tons of shopping, barefoot landing, and they've got marinas on the waterway that go out to the ocean. Little River and Cherry Grove similarly have marinas on the waterway, charter boats out to the ocean. They've also got tidal inlets for fishing and kayaking. These are just some examples of the things you can do outside of Myrtle Beach. If you've traveled here as a kid, as you grow up, you uh, get to the point where you decide on a college. Don't forget about CCU. We have a major college about 20 minutes west of here, and it's got solid four-year programs, and like I said, 20 minutes away from the beach. Keep that in mind. Also, if you're not a student, you could check out CCU's football team. They're a fairly good team. Last year they went, I believe, 11-2, something like that. They got a nice stadium, nice facility. Also, their baseball team's not too shabby. So if you're interested in a college game, whether it be football or baseball, keep CCU in mind. Do not, and I repeat, do not forget to check the weather if you're visiting Myrtle in the shoulder months or winter. The uh, off seasons can be a little dynamic, to say the least. Temperatures can range from 30 in the morning 70 in the afternoon depending on the season and whether or not you've got the wind blowing on you, on you that's for sure because 40 degrees on the beach with a, the wind blowing could feel pretty darn cold so around here we freeze in the morning and we sweat in the afternoon that's kind of just how we roll so keep in mind check the weather before you visit here's a new one that's relevant since the last time we did a don't some myrtle beach video these uh, squatted trucks that are rolling around everywhere say what you will about them whatever a lot of these trucks that are jacked up or squatted, some of these kids forget to adjust the headlights and you could be blinded by these headlights in the early morning and late at night. So just keep that in mind when you see these trucks rolling around. If one gets behind you, you might not be able to see. So as a safety precaution, do not forget about those crazy trucks on the streets. And of course, before you visit Myrtle, don't forget to check out all the playlists on this channel. Over, well over 800 videos pertaining to Myrtle Beach and the things within. So if you're interested, check out the channel, go through the playlist. There's plenty of restaurants, plenty of beach stuff, plenty of construction, what have you, a lot to check out. That's what I got for you today. Those are the don'ts of Myrtle Beach, the 2022 edition. Leave a comment down below. What did I forget? What do you recommend? What should be on this list? Share it with everyone else. And until next time, take it easy.